John here guys and today we are talking about the latest bind and fly toothpick class release from diatone the gtb229 now this is the very uniquely designed sort of a square spindly um, frame design um, that is trading surface area for thickness um, and this is a special release indeed now diatone has been in the bind and fly games for the last several years having very strong offerings like the gt2 and earlier this year they released the gtr349 that we reviewed here on this channel a 117 mile per hour three inch dynamo Follow-up to that, they released a 6S version of that, and now they're wandering into the toothpick class uh, with the help. I understand this is a collaboration with Kebab. Now let's run down the components, and you will start to see why this is so special. Uh, it has a Runcam Nano 2, um, the best camera for this size class um, today. I also recommend that camera for just flying on your 5 inches because they come with a very nice nano to micro camera adapter. Now here's one of the most notable pieces, the TBS Team Black Sheep Nano Pro 32 VTX. That is unbelievable that a bind and fly shipping from overseas contains what many consider to be the premium micro nano sized video transmitter that you could easily stick into any size builds and take care of your micro, mid-range, long-range needs. It goes all the way up to 400 milliwatts. Outstanding. Comes with the Mamba 16 by 16 stack. We all love the Mamba stacks and they're very durable um, but affordable price offering options. And it comes with these Mamba 1103 10,000kV motors. That's right, I opted to go for the 2S version. This is very light. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards these days for 65 millimeter toothpick class props to go ahead and use a 2S battery, keep the, high, the kV very high on the motors, and then if you move over to the three inch T style props, like the twig that we just went over, uh, for those I prefer 3S. So, what can we say about this thing? This thing weighs 44 grams, extremely light. They recommend a 2S 550 milliamp battery, but I find it runs quite well on a 350 or a 450, saving you a little bit of weight, adding a little bit of performance, and you can still get two to three minutes on very heavy flying, even longer if you're just cruising around. Now let's go over the design. As mentioned, this is a very unique design. And at first I didn't know what to think about it, but um, after flying it, crashing it a little bit, it's performing extremely well. The frame adds some very much needed rigidity and stability. And there are these spindles joining from all four of these corners to give you a very rigid and strong frame. And it looks very thin because it is, but the actual thickness of it, the tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God, it even has a watermark. Is uh, thicker than your average toothpick class quad. One thing that I don't like before we get any further is there's essentially almost no motor protection out at the end of the arms. Um, so in a very hard crash, that motor is going to take that hit. Um, but that's probably the only gripe that I can find with this thing. The stack, um, with all as with all Diatone products, is built immaculately. Now trying to build this on your own, this stack is tiny. Anybody that has built the 20 by 20 version of the Mamba knows that those pads are virtually microscopic. This may be on a subparticle level to try to, I mean, just look at how close together these pads are on the flight controller. Ah, uh, it's giving me uh, anxiety just looking at those. Uh, it has a third layer on top that holds the Team Black Sheep 
video transmitter on there. The build is just so, so nice. Has your camera protect protector. It has a very nicely printed TPU orange pod for this thing. And you can see it's very open, so you'll get a lot of airflow to all of your components in there. And because it's also open, it's not taking up a tremendous amount of weight. Now, I love that this comes pre-installed with a legit holder for your dipole antenna. I love these toothpick class offerings, such as the Senecan, or even the very, very good Beta FPV Humquad HX100. Um, they kind of have a place for the antenna, but it's not anchored in. This is the best way that I've seen somebody anchor it um, as a part of the pod. So that's very, very good. Um, they have plenty of room for you to stuff your receiver inside. You just have to take the canopy off, which is only three screws. Very easy and quick to do. And it comes with a connector for you to plug a FR Sky RSXR receiver in there. I don't use that. I use the XM Plus primarily, but for these tiny little micros, I like to use the XM. It's pretty much the same receiver, but it's just slightly smaller and it only has one antenna instead of two. I think that's perfectly fine for these because I'm not going to be flying them long range and it's very slightly smaller. So I just put a little bit of heat shrink on there, uh, threw it in the canopy and I used a little zip tie to kind of anchor it to this little hole. They have like a little hole up here where you can run your antenna this way. Now, um, one thing I do like is there are these little holes on the sides, kind of up by the camera that would allow you to have dual antennas sticking out in this orientation. But um, with the camera installed, it's very difficult to reach um, that hole. So depending on what kind of camera angle you had, you can kind of fish it up in there. Uh, it would be pretty easy if I, you just took the camera out, but I was too lazy to do that. So I just put it up on top um, with a zip tie, put a little heat shrink around it. Perfectly fine, perfectly durable. Um, one note is because this overall design is somewhat tall, it's very easy to turtle mode, which I like. Uh, it comes with a strap pre-installed and it has a couple of extras in the box. You have your typical diatone extras. Uh, it comes with this set of HQ 65 millimeter props, which are quite good. It's the first time I've tried these. And uh, it comes with some extra hardware, a buzzer, an extra strap, and some extra little zip ties. So when I went to go put the zip tie right here, I actually had one in the package. I didn't have to go search through my own stash. Uh, which is quite convenient. Now, how does this thing fly? Um, I was pretty much expecting the same experience as a lot of my bind and fly toothpicks that I've flown. Pretty much for me, the gold standard was the HX100 by Beta FPV. Um, but I'll tell you right now, this is better. It's very slightly more powerful. The tune out of the box is one of the best tunes I've ever flown out of the box of any quad ever. It's so smooth. It's so perfectly done on the rates. Now, um, I've started to try to fly these out of the box and not do a tremendous amount of tuning because that's not how you're gonna get them. So I wanna know if they fly well or not. So all I did was set up my switches and go out and go. I didn't touch the rates, didn't touch the pids at all. Motors were not hot. Um, there was a tiny bit of flutter all the way at the very top of the throttle range, like 85% and higher, but that's typical of everything in this class. Even the three by two T uh, three inch props are giving me a little bit of flutter on my twig at that all the way up the top of the throttle range. Anywhere else in the throttle range, which that's, you're not usually going all the way. Uh, it's absolutely smooth. The control was perfect. I don't always put my race rates on these tiny little things because they are so small and agile and they do have such a tremendous amount of power per weight um, that they're not always gonna fly exactly the same. This really felt <laughs> almost like having a real life version of liftoff simulator. It was plenty of power to save you in a very tall dive and plenty of just, it's so nimble in the air. Some of the maneuvers that you're gonna see in the flight footage at the end will astound you, will amaze you. Now, here's the most significant thing that I can think about this, and it is the price. Um, this price for this thing is $130. 
right now there's a coupon code that brings the price down to i believe to like 110 or 115 bucks you cannot build this for that price you just can't so with diatone out there putting offerings out like this um, they pretty much blew the three inch class away. You can't build a three inch massive drummer with premium motors for anywhere close to the price of the GTR 349. And in the same way, you cannot build a toothpick or a pickle or a twig with these same components for the same price. Um, on my twig, I use the Isheen Nano VTX. Uh, which I really, really like. I think it's the perfect VTX for this. But even with that $15 budget video transmitter, I can't touch this price. And this has the Team Black Sheep version. And Trappy appeared and commented how he felt that that was a clone of the Gen 1 uh, TBS Nano. I'm not sure if that's really the case. I mean, the Ishin does have much more power levels. The design doesn't look exactly the same to me, but there's no mistaking that the Team Black Sheep offerings are the gold standard in FPV for racing, for freestyle, for what long range. And this is absolutely a better option. Um, I just don't typically use a lot of their VTXs because the price. But if you're getting a binding fly for a budget price, it's so cheap and it comes with the top of the line gear installed. Why not? Why even bother building on this, you know, the, this stack that you're going to need an electron microscope in order to see all the tiny little pads on here. What is this? A center for ants. This is a game changer, guys. This is the new Bind and Fly toothpick class recommendation um, out on the market today. There's gonna be a lot of new stuff coming out very soon. There's gonna be a lot of hype. You're gonna wanna switch and buy and buy and build. Don't forget guys, the curse of the toothpick is real. The electronics in this class are still not very stable, but one thing that I have grown to trust over the past year is that almost anything that Diatone puts out is very, very, very good. So not a ton of people have been flying this stack for long term, so we don't know. But if it's anything like any of the other Mamba stacks, I have pretty high confidence in it. What do you think, guys? Is this gonna change your mind about building your own toothpicks? Should you just buy one of these from now on and save yourself all the trouble and save yourself a couple of bucks? I mean, why? Uh, I love doing my own builds, guys. I've done 50, 60, 80, I don't even know, I lost track. But when these things come out and they're so good, is it even worth still doing? I don't know, man. Um, I like this thing so much, I asked them to go ahead and send me the three inch version as well. Um, so stay tuned to that. We'll see if that low price build can rival the price and the performance of my twig. Thanks guys.